So in 10.1, we talked about greatest common factors, and we talked about how to factor things with four terms. In 10.2, we looked at how to factor trinomials, things with three terms. In this section, we'll look at how to factor binomials. So these are factors with two terms. So again, the first step is always to look for a greatest common factor within the terms. If we have subtraction between our two terms, we get to keep going. If we don't, if we have addition, then we have to stop. We'll talk about that in a minute. Is each term a square? If so, we can keep going. If not, we have to stop. We'll write those in parentheses. One, ha one parentheses has a plus, one has a minus. And then we'll see if anything inside the parentheses can still be factored. So here's the idea. Here we have something that's squared minus something else that's squared. So we have to ask ourselves, what's being squared in P, in P squared? Well, P, right? And what's being squared with Q squared? Well, Q. So here's how we factor it. We write two sets of parentheses. We write the P that was first at the beginning of both. We write the Q that was at the end at the end of both. We write one plus sign and one minus sign. And that's factored. It's a little bit like a formula. It's always the same pattern. There was no greatest common factor. We should have talked about that first. And now there's nothing inside those parentheses that we can keep going because there's no exponents left. That's the signal that we needed to keep looking. So here's one that's a little um, more common. So first of all, we look at 81 and 100 and we ask ourselves, is there a common factor? And there is not. So we need to, we can keep going. So again, we ask ourselves here, what's being squared? What times itself gives us 81? Well, that's nine and X squared would be X. We have a minus sign and we ask ourselves what squared gives us 100 Y squared. So what squared gives us 100? That would be 10. And what squared gives us a Y squared? That would be Y. So we write our two sets of parentheses. 9x will go at the beginning of both. 10y will go at the end of both. And we make 1 plus and 1 minus. Now it doesn't matter if you put the minus first and then the plus, or the plus first and then the minus. The order doesn't make a difference. There's no greatest common factor between 9 and 10. There's no exponents. There's nothing else we can do with these this problem, that's the factoring. So let's look at this. Again, here we really have kind of a one in front. So there's no, no common factor between one and 256. So we start off by asking ourselves what squared gives us x to the fourth? And that would be x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Then we ask ourselves what squared gives us 256? Now 256 is a big number and you may not know off the top of your head what squared, so you can just try some things. You know 10 times 10, or you probably know that 10 times 10 is 100. So we know it has to be bigger than 10. So you just try 11 times 11 is 121. 12 times 12 is 144. 13 times 13 is 169. You might say, well, this isn't getting big enough fast enough, so maybe we jump to 15 times 15. And that's 225. We need it a little bit bigger still, so maybe we try 16 times 16. And that's 256. That's what we want. So this is 16 in here. So we'll write our two sets of parentheses. We'll put this x squared at the beginning of both. And we'll put the 16 at the end of both. We write 1 plus 1 minus. Now we have to keep looking because inside of here, there's an a squared, there's an x squared. Now, so we ask ourselves, is, do we have something that's squared with a minus sign between? Remember, if it has a plus sign, we can't do anything. So this piece has a plus sign. We can't do anything with that. But this is still something squared minus something else squared. This would be x squared, and this would be 4 squared. 
So we can break this piece apart a little bit further. We'd write x at the beginning of both, 4 at the end of both, 1 plus 1 minus, and this piece that we had has to just get copied down in front. Now this still has a minus sign, you might say, but there's no squared on that x, so we can't break it apart any further. So that tells us that there's nothing more we can do here, and this is factored. So let's look at this one. So we have to look first for a greatest common factor, and we can see that we have a negative 2 and an 18. Well, negative 2 and 18 have a common factor. They have a factor of 2, but let's not do just a positive 2. Let's do a negative 2, because we don't like the negatives to be at the beginning of our problem. Um, they also both have a b here, so we're going to put a 2b. So if I take away, take out a negative 2 from the first piece, I would end up with a to the fourth, because that b is also gone, right? It's in front here. Now, if I take or divide by 18 by a negative 2, I would have a negative 9, and then b to the seventh divided by b. I'm taking away one of the b's, so it would be b to the sixth. So now I can look at what squared minus what squared. So a to the fourth would be a squared. 9 would be 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And b to the 6th, remember we're looking for something times something, which gives us b to the 6th. We really are just trying to split this up evenly. So it would be b to the 3rd and b to the 3rd. So we write our two sets of parentheses, a squared and a squared, 3b to the 3rd and 3b to the 3rd, 1 plus, 1 minus, and this that was out in front has to stay out in front. Now we need to look a little carefully because there is this squared in here that tells us we may not be finished. This one has a plus sign, so we can't do anything more with that. So we need to look really carefully at this. So the a squared we can split apart into a times a. That part's okay. But the 3b cubed... We don't have a way of splitting that apart into two even parts, or two equal parts. So we can't do anything more with that. So this would be our final answer. So let's look at this. 16 and 29. So there's no greatest common factor between 16 and 29. So I just start looking for things squared. So 16 would be a 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. And m to the 4th would be m squared. I have a minus sign, so that's good. So what about 29? What times itself gives us 29? Well, 5 times 5 is 25, and 6 times 6 is 36. So 29 fits in between there. There's not a number which means we can't split this part up. And there's no greatest common factor, so that means we can't do anything with this problem, and we have to call it prime. Here's one more. So in this problem, we don't have a greatest common factor. We have this nice, um, we can split x squared up, just x times x, and we can split 4y up, 4y squared into 2y. But here's the problem. This sign right here is a plus sign. It's not a minus sign. Every single problem we've done has had a minus there, and that's because it's the only way you can factor it is with a minus. So this answer is also prime. And that's true anytime you have a plus sign in the middle of two terms. You just can't go any further.